Hey there, fellow mitochondriacs. I wanted to, first of all, tell everyone happy Labor Day. If you're off, I hope you have a chance to enjoy it with friends or family, loved ones, etc. And also get a chance to take some time to get outside and get in nature and just kind of unwind. So I was talking to a close friend of mine, a, an ER physician who I went to medical school with, who I also was in the Air Force with, and he asked me, he's like, man, I, I've been, you know, my, your videos have been popping up on my feed and, uh, you know, I'm really proud of what you're trying to put out. But he's like, have you had a chance to really tell people kind of your why, like who you are and why you're doing these talking head videos about, you know, mitochondrial function and the Warburg effect. And, you know, I didn't really have much of an answer for him. I know I did a, an initial kind of cancer intro video, but, you know, I haven't really done much of a why and who I am video. And it got me thinking, maybe I should take this time over this Labor Day weekend to just put something quickly up so you guys know who is on the other end of the camera. So I am originally from Topeka, Kansas, the 39th degree latitude north. And I grew up in and around Northeast Kansas my whole life and ended up joining the military right out of high school, joined the Kansas Air National Guard as a combat medic, a 4N, and really had a fantastic experience. It was for me a way to test whether or not I, I liked the medical field or not. I was thinking I wanted to go into medicine. My mom's a nurse. So it was really just an experiment. It was also a way for me to pay for school or attempt to pay for school. I knew I needed to go to college in order to, you know, complete these dreams of becoming a physician. And so I ended up joining our local unit here in Topeka and had a fantastic experience. I ended up, after done with my initial medical training with the Air Force down at Shepard Air Force Base and subsequently off at Air Force Base in Nebraska, I was able to start my undergraduate training in Lawrence, Kansas at the University of Kansas and initially was thinking to study human biology. And I did that for a couple of years and I got through all the, you know, initial, you know, preliminary courses and ended up kind of after my organic chemistry courses, I ended up, you know, changing course slightly to study biochemistry and I finished my degree in, in biochemistry and I've had a pretty good relationship with biochemistry. I, I, I've, I've always been kind of in awe of the chemical transformation of different biomolecules and, you know, enzymatic, you know, functions and, and just the beauty in it. And it served me well. Like when I got into medical school, for example, like, you know, the first about eight to 12 weeks are really he heavy on biochemistry and cell biology, which I had a good background in and it served me well in the initial parts of my medical training. But it, it really, you know, past the initial first couple of, you know, years of medical school, it really doesn't have a lot of place in the practice of clinical medicine. So it kind of had to take a back burner. Now, it's interesting because I was lucky enough to stumble across a book when I was an undergrad called Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About by Kevin Trudeau. And he had a subsequent book as well. And I was very fascinated by what I learned in those books. And it's not that I necessarily took, you know, the quote unquote natural cures as gospel, but what it did was is it opened my eyes to, you know, something outside of the centralized paradigm of mainstream conventional medicine. And I went into medical school, you know, kind of with some skepticism of what I was doing, you know, and kind of got lost in that, kind of got a little caught up in the allure and the arrogance of being the doctor, quote unquote, and, you know, kind of put those skepticisms and those 
interest on the back burner while I was going through my conventional medical training and you know it's fairly intense and all-encompassing and you know you're kind of just got your head down just trying to make it through and and it wasn't until my third year of medical school I, I at the time I thought I wanted to be a trauma surgeon I had actually ended up meeting with the, the head of trauma surgery at KU Med in Kansas City and he said that he thought that the best place for me to get my third and fourth years were in Wichita and um, you know at the University of Kansas there's three major campuses but there's really two major campuses there's Kansas City and there's Wichita and I actually went to Wichita to do my third and fourth years because of that surgeon he said I should do you know my surgical clerkships as well as my electives in a place where I'd have more exposure and and more ability to operate and I, I realized sadly quickly that I, I did not want to be a surgeon I, I like trauma and I still like critical care but um, I didn't want to be a surgeon and so I kind of felt my, found myself a little bit lost and, and I was lucky to find a mentor during medical school who was an internist and um, she had been going through some of these Institute of Functional Medicine modules as an attending physician and she was telling me how cool they were and I was like okay like and, and on top of that the, the internal medicine residents and attendings were so just welcoming and nice that it really felt like a good place for me so I ended up doing a, a residency in internal medicine but knowing that you know, conventional medicine, even though I was in the middle of it, really wasn't for me. I, I knew that I had a different path kind of pretty early on um, in my third and fourth years. And that kind of mentality, you know, really stuck with me all the way through my residency training. And the first chance I got out of residency, I was doing, you know, integrative medicine courses through the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine and the Institute for Functional Medicine and ended up doing a, a year-long fellowship and functional medicine through the Kalish Institute and really learned a ton and really augmented my conventional medical training and really scratched the itch of, um, you know, integrative and functional and alternative medicine and really saw the power and what was being taught in these courses. And right around that time, you know, I think after I got through all of my schooling, you know, and residency training, I was left with kind of a difficult to explain, you know, chronic fatigue. And I really latched onto the energy module within the IFM, which was mostly about mitochondria. And obviously, you know, having an undergraduate degree in biochemistry and cell biology and being a conventional medical doctor, I, I, I learned about mitochondria, mostly from the ATP and bioenergetic standpoint, but that's about it. You know, I didn't really know a lot of the extra functions and the really critical central importance that mitochondria play in our health. You know, it wasn't until about 2017, 2018, when I stumbled upon a, a brilliant physician, neurosurgeon named Dr. Jack Cruz. And if anybody is aware of him, that he they know that he is passionate, he's brilliant, he's very blunt. and he is just kind of like on another level, you know, he's times 10, uh, most people. And his understanding of, you know, not only the biochemistry and, and clinical medicine aspect of it, but how he integrates in, you know, quantum mechanics and physics and different areas of science to an expertise that he's able to, you know, tie in dots. And so I started following a lot of his podcasts that he would, you know, be on at the time, you know, 2018, 2019, and ended up becoming a member of his site jackcruz.com and, and and if anybody else is a member of his, his site you know you have access to like all of his webinars that he was doing from like 2012 2013 all the way every month you know these are like two three hour webinars which with, with like two or three hour question and answers with his members and he did that through about 2018 2019 and you know i was able to get through all of those you know many many hours of having dr cruz you know lecture lecture to me essentially not me personally but you know to us as a whole as a group and that raised a lot more questions you know I started to see what I was learning in the IFM or the Institute for Functional Medicine you know when it comes to mitochondrial function as being pretty like elementary pretty like very basic and in a lot of ways with a lot of blind spots and so I started to like with the help and, and kind of newfound curiosity interest kind of ignited by Dr. Cruz with you know a background of my own passion and interest in healing and, and health and integrative health and medicine, 
I was able to, you know, really start to just get into the literature. And I wanted to, I didn't want to necessarily prove Dr. Cruz wrong. I just wanted to see what he was talking about and see where it was in the literature because, you know, he talks a lot, <laughs> but I don't see a lot of like him, you know, citing papers and, and trying to, you know, trying to really show us in the literature where he's finding these things. Not that I necessarily don't believe what he's saying. I think he's so far ahead of where, you know, most, what he would call centralized research is at and being able to connect dots that he, he kind of seamlessly ties things together that, that um, don't make sense for a lot of people. And so I started doing, you know, a lot of intensive research on mitochondria in particular and um, came up with some really interesting findings. And, you know, in particular, I was interested in mitochondria, mitochondrial heteroplasmy, mitochondrial redox biology, ATP, you know, photobiomodulation, how, you know, different physical forces, in particular light, affects mitochondria. And, you know, I was kind of on my way, you know, to gaining, you know, whatever you call expertise, you know, it's hard to know what that means, but I definitely had a high level of understanding, I think, compared to a lot of my colleagues in the conventional system. Nothing compared to Dr. Cruz, but compared to, you know, the average, you know, physician, doctor, you know, who kind of forgot about biochemistry and cell biology back in the second and third year of medical school, you know, I think I had a, a pretty good understanding. And I was able to, you know, start to apply that to, you know, my clinical practice. I ended up starting a, a, a side business, basically, an integrative functional medicine business, probably about the worst possible time in history. I, I started it right about a month before the pandemic started and had to quickly, you know, switch gears to, you know, Zoom visits and virtual visits and trying to figure out how to, you know, care for patients, you know, online, which ended up being kind of a blessing because it's pretty cool to, uh, you know, use Zoom and, and use a lot of the informational PowerPoints that I've created over the years to help teach patients on the fly. But anyway, my point is, is that, you know, I was dabbling in this and I, I, I was mostly interested in you know, things that mainstream medicine has kind of demonized and, you know, placed in, uh, you know, in a wastebasket, like things like chronic fatigue, things like fibromyalgia, things like IBS, IBD, et cetera, you know, where, where people don't get a lot of help from the centralized paradigm, they kind of get marginalized. And I kind of was focusing on, on that. And, um, you know, I've now been a hospitalist for going on eight years as an attending physician. And I, you know, my, my grandfather, paternal grandfather was diagnosed a year ago, unexpectedly, you know, came to the ER with abdominal pain and was found to have a giant, you know, hepatocellular carcinoma and, you know, subsequently had developed metastatic disease and, and has then been through the, the, the conventional paradigm, you know, without really any success at all, unfortunately. And then I just started to look around me, you know, I started, I mean, not that I wasn't already, you know, but I just, I started to really look and find, you know, in particular, you know, in my current location of practice in South Florida, I started to see just an explosion of cancer. And in, like I said, in the initial, you know, intro to cancerous metabolic disease video, it wasn't just, you know, people that you expect to have cancer, you know, it was like these like 20 year olds and 30 year olds and, and early 40 year olds with like metastatic cancer and who had failed chemotherapy and just were like on sadly on death's doorstep. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And so I think it was just you know, I just, I kind of started doing research and, you know, came across, you know, Dr. Thomas Seafried, who had, I had seen videos of his in the past, you know, but I just, I didn't have a strong, you know, like interest in cancer. It was not something that was like, okay, this is what I want to like focus on. I, I thought it was interesting. I, I, I liked that there was a biochemical basis and, you know, a lot of the things he said made sense, but I didn't really like do a deep dive into his work until, you know, kind of like spring of 2024 to the spring of 2024, you know, when my grandpa wasn't really doing very well and, and I was really starting to see it, it, what feels like a huge uptick in cancer incidents, uh, at least in my own, you know, area of responsibility. And so that's kind of the journey, you know, how I ended up where, I was, where I'm at right now, you know, and I just started connecting a lot of dots, you know, I, and then I think, unfortunately, like a lot of dots that aren't connected by a lot of different practitioners. And it definitely, like, there was direct relationship between my study of mitochondria and mitochondrial heteroplasmy and you know I, I've already done the video about it you know but how I, mitochondrial heteroplasmy connects to cancer and how like these mutant mitochondria were utilizing Warburg metabolism and I was like oh my gosh like there is something really here.
you know, like th there is an intersection between Jack Cruz and <laughs> Thomas Seafried, you know, and, and definitely Thomas Seafried probably doesn't know who Dr. Jack Cruz is and Dr. Jack Cruz who talks about Thomas Seafried quite a bit, you know, um, says he has a pretty myopic view of, of cancer, but I do think there's a, there's, there is an intersection, you know, between mitochondrial medicine, people who are interested in, in, in mitochondria and, and bioenergetics and, you know, quantum, quantum biology and cancer. And also like the, what, what, what Seafried and, and Dr. Werbert, of course, many years before him had discovered about cancer. And I don't think they have to be necessarily at odds with each other. I think that they can augment each other uh, completely. And so, you know, I started my, my channel up again, you know, um, after a long winter of getting beat up as a hospitalist. And, you know, I'm so glad that I did because, it, you know, it, it has really, I really think that it's cathartic for me to get this information out um, just for my own personal self. But, you know, I, when I read the comments of people, you know, who have these amazing high level questions or they share their story of having, you know, a, a GBM or, you know, cancer of all, all types or, you know, or they, people reach out to me via email and, you know, they, they, they give me their stories about how no one, you know, for the most part can help them with this. You know, they, I had a, a person who contacted me and they said that they had some specialized, you know, oncologist at Duke University who basically told them that a ketogenic diet was useless for cancer. And I just had to chuckle, but at the same time, like, I wanted to just, like, punch the computer screen because I'm like, wow, like, who are these people who are so arrogant that they'd be willing to, you know, essentially harm patients because they aren't willing to humble themselves and admit, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know everything there is to know about cancer. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's something, maybe you should look into it. Can you can you send me a paper? Can you send me a video? Can you send me a source? I can look into this for you. But no, they just get completely shut down, and it's it's maddening, and it's, I, I feel like it's malpractice, you know. But that's kind of you know how in August of 2024, you know, I ended up doing videos about the metabolic origins of cancer. And, you know, I look forward to this upcoming micro series on melatonin. I look forward to, you know, videos about, you know, glutamine and glucose inhibitors. I look forward to, you know, the discussions we have on the comment sections, or I, I, I look forward to fielding emails and helping anybody I can, you know, with these problems and trying to, you know, just be one cog in the wheel to, to try to better humanity in some way you know it's not all altruistic you know I, I don't want cancer you know like I, I don't I want to learn these things for myself too and to protect my family and stay well but when my friend Dave my physician friend asked me why are you doing this does anybody know why you're doing this I, it really made me think and said you know why am I doing this and it's because you know it's terrible but it's also a privilege that I get to see so much suffering, unnecessary suffering in a hospital every day at work. And that, you know, at least for me personally, gave me motivation and drive to research and get as much information that I understand at this time into your hands so that you can, you know, digest it and present it to your own doctors and, you know, maybe give you some shot that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So that is my why. Until next time.